everybody. So today we're going to talk about attacking FTP. So there's three ways that you can attack any protocol. One is the protocol itself. Uh, the second way is to attack the protocol application. And then the third one is to attack the application's configuration. All right. So the protocol application and configuration. So we're going to delve into each of those uh, and discuss a little bit about them so that you have a better understand how to attack FTP. So we can see on hat tricks that uh, they have a, a bunch of information on how to attack uh, FTP. But I want to scroll down and get to the meat of it, which is there are a few different ways to attack the uh, login, which I consider the configuration, right? Use poor username and passwords, weak username and passwords is misconfiguration. Right, and so they've identified two attack vectors. One is anonymous login, and the second one is brute force. We're gonna do both just to show you what it looks like, but I would always try an anonymous login against FTP because that's usually turned on by default in a lot of circumstances. So uh, you'll find it more often than not that anonymous access is allowed. But again, we'll cover both of them. So we can see here on my screen that uh, I've already done a scan against the target. We're using the Metasploitable 2 as our target system. Uh, and we can see that port 21 is open FTP and it has a version of uh, 2.3.4 for the VSFTPD application. That's going to be important to remember later when we attack the application itself. Uh, but the scan, uh, Nmap scan, we did run the common scans uh, the common scripts against it and we identified that it does allow anonymous login uh, again so we'll try that but we'll also try a brute force attack and see if we can gain any additional information okay so first we'll try an FTP login and uh, we'll just use anonymous and then I'll also use anonymous for the password as well and we can see that we were able to log in so nmap was correct let me do an ls-a and see what kind of information we have, which is nothing. Now, a lot of times what will happen with anonymous logins is the administrators will basically sequester any files that are uploaded almost immediately so that uh, if anybody else logs in, they won't be able to see them. So it's possible that this anonymous login is used for transferring data, but we don't see anything. So we're kind of at a dead end here. And this is not a finding. Simply by using anonymous access to FTP uh, is not considered a finding from a penetration testing perspective unless there's sensitive information that we were able to gather while we logged in anonymously. So let's go ahead and back out of here and we'll perform a brute force attack against this system. Okay, so to perform the brute force attack, I'm gonna use Hydra. Uh, now, I'm using MSF admin as the username. This is kind of a cheat because I know from the Metasploitable 2 server, they tell you that the login is MSF admin, right? So it is a cheat, but what you should do is when you're doing uh, enumeration uh, against a target, hopefully you've identified potential usernames you can use to do a brute force attack. Um, again, this is a, a shortcut because I already knew what it was and it is an abnormal one but I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway. Now I do have a large password file that you can see here uh, but I also have the dash E flag with the NSR. N is null or no password. S is the password is the same as the username and then R is the username is spelled backwards. Uh, then we got our target which is 10.0.2.11 and the protocol is FTP. So I'll go ahead and launch that and see what we get. All right, almost immediately we got the username and password, which was MSF admin, MSF admin. Again, it was a um, weak password and was able to identify it pretty quickly. Now it's not uncommon to actually have weak passwords, uh, but it is uncommon to have it to happen so quickly, right? So uh, normally what you would do when you're doing a brute force attack is perform a brute force attack against common usernames or default usernames during the enumeration stage. Uh, and then later on, if you're kind of stuck and you need some additional attack vectors and, and pray that you can get something else, doing a brute force attack against uh, the FTP server using a large database is a method that you can use later on in a penetration test. 
So let's go ahead and log in and see what we can get out of this MSF admin username and password. Okay, so I'm gonna use uh, FTP again to log in to the remote system and I'm gonna use MSF admin as the username and MSF admin as the password. And then I'll do a list of the files and we can see that there's a lot more information here. Uh, .ssh would be something we'd look at, obviously sudo as admin successful something. So this would be when we exfiltrate data against that target system. So uh, this would definitely be a finding, weak username and password gained us access to sensitive information. Okay, so now that we understand how to perform an attack against uh, misconfiguration or weak configuration on the FTP application, Let's go ahead and move to an attack against the application itself. Okay, so I brought up our scan data against the target system and we can see that it's VSFTPD 2.3.4 like we mentioned before. So I'm gonna run search exploit against VSFTP and see if there's any sort of exploit we can use against the target. All right, and we can see that there is, there's actually two. Um, one is actually in Metasploit. So VSFTPD 2.3.4 backdoor command execution on Metasploit. So we're gonna launch uh, the Metasploit framework and see if we can compromise the system using the exploit in Metasploit. All right, so we're in the Metasploit framework uh, and I did a search for VSFTPD and we can see that there's two potential attack vectors. Both of them are really, uh, one for VSFTPD 2.3.2 and one for 2.3.4. Uh, the 2.3.4 has been ranked as excellent. So we're gonna go ahead and use that one. So let me select that one, use one. And then uh, let's take a look at the options. So we can see what we need to deal with. All right, so our host, we obviously need to fill that in. So let's set that. Our host to, so let's set our host to 10.0.2.11. And then I like to set the host and the port, the local host and port, simply because uh, it provides additional information for the executable uh, to communicate back with. And uh, I don't always trust Metasploit to, to know what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this out. So set C host to 10.0.2.13, which is my local host. And then I'm gonna set the our port or the the local host port to let's just do six 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 all right so we'll do that and then we'll run now before I run it I want to tell you that sometimes and this happens a lot in Metasploit is that when you run an exploit exploit against a target it doesn't always work on the first go so if you fail the first time just rerun it and see what happens and it's possible that we're gonna encounter that same, same problem here. So let me go ahead and run this and then uh, see what we get. So it's trying its attack and it looks like it's probably gonna fail. So, okay. So the exploit completed, but there is no session created. So let's just run it again and see what we get. All right, so we get a different response already and it's going after root. It did find a shell and Let's see. Yep, okay, we've got a command shell, session one open. So I'm gonna just do the typical enumeration. So who am I? And we can see that I'm root. So you name dash A. And it says Linux Metasploitable 2.6.24. Uh, all right, so we have exploited the system through exploitation of the application. So we've gained information both from the uh, application exploit and through the misconfiguration of the FTP because of weak usernames and passwords. Okay, so we were able to exploit the FTP server in a couple different ways in this video. Uh, and in reality, there's the th all three ways would work. So uh, I would refer you back to the EdderCap and Wireshark video to understand how to exploit a clear text protocol like FTP uh, by performing a layer two attack in the network. The second way we did it is the the configuration was bad because they used weak usernames and passwords. So we attacked the configuration. And then the third way, we found that there was an exploit for the version of the server.
server that was running on that system. So we were able to exploit all three different attack vectors against that FTP server. Now, if you have any questions about this video or exploiting FTP, make sure you connect to us on the Discord server, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And with that, thanks for watching.